Hello and welcome to my home. I'm Gail. I'm part of the care team at Windsor and this is the room that I often spend time in the morning to do my devotion so it's really lovely to have you with me and to share it with you. I've just been outside sweeping up the leaves yet again but also looking for those beautiful telltale green shoots from the bulbs that let me know that all my hard work is paying off. Winter for me is such a time of watching and waiting and never more so than this year. We are one of the many families in New Zealand that has been affected by the post um, lockdown job losses. And so more than ever, we seem to be watching and waiting and waiting and watching. And that comes with a whole lot of anxiety. I often find when I'm troubled that I go to the Psalms. I love the Psalms. I love the color of the Psalms. I love the word pictures that the Psalmists paint for us. I have this gallery in my mind of Psalms. I have Psalm 23, I have Psalm 51, I have Psalm 91, Psalm 139, and then there's the lesser known Psalms. And it was to one of these Psalms that I went to this week, Psalm 107. And the opening line of Psalm 107 is, give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his love endures forever. The psalmist continues to paint four very different pictures of the types of crises we may face um, at one time or another. The helplessness and hopelessness of a desert experience, the darkness and oppression of captivity, the desperation of illness and grief, and the anxiety of being out in the deep water in the midst of a storm. I want to read the first picture that the psalmist gives us to you, but I would love it if you would spend time in the psalm yourself and discover the other three. So in Psalm 107 verse 4, we start to get the first word picture. Some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. There is a pattern in this psalm. In all four pictures, there's the crisis, and then a cry for help, and then it concludes with God's rescue and provision, and then a call to praise. There's also this, this kind of rhythm with these very similar uh, words. So in each crisis, the psalmist says that they cried out to the Lord in their distress. Um, sorry, they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. So four times we get this rhythm throughout the psalm. And again, four times we hear the, the rhythm of the psalmist's call to praise, saying, give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love. There's this kind of dance between um, opposite themes of being lost and found, of being held captive and set free, of illness and healing, and of stillness and safety after the wind-whipped waves of the storm. So much of the psalm resonated with me and where I find myself at the moment. And perhaps what's a little frustrating is in the psalm, we get the whole story. We get the crisis and the cry and the conclusion. But at the moment, many of us are still in that phase of crying out in our distress and have not yet received the rescue or deliverance that we are seeking. So where does that leave us? As I was reflecting on this, I was reminded of Habakkuk uh, 3.17 where the word says, though the fig tree does not blossom, though there be no fruit on the vines, the produce of the olive fail and the fields yield no food, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. This is so easy to do when we've been rescued, where we've been delivered. It's such a natural response to give thanks and praise to the Lord. But somehow when we're in the midst of it, it's so much more difficult. And that's why I love these words in Habakkuk, particularly if you read them in the Amplified Version, because there they say, yet I will choose to rejoice in the Lord. 
And so often for those of us that may be in the midst of a crisis, it's not a feeling, it's a choice. It's a choice to say, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I don't know behind your closed doors what you are dealing with. I don't know the barrenness of your desert. I don't know the oppression and weight of your captivity. I don't know the depth of your pain or the volume of your storm. But I do know that our God does. I do know that whatever we are facing, God is with us. He is faithful. He hears our distress and he responds with his mercy and unfailing love. I have this little piece of paper in my Bible and I'm sure lots of us have them, you know, where we found something really special and we tuck it away. And so I pulled it out and again, it's from the Psalms. And I love it because it's it's almost like one part of it is us crying out and the second part is the answer from the Lord. And so taken from Psalm 38, um, it says, I am faint and sorely bruised. I groan by reason of the disquiet and moaning of my heart. Lord, all my desire is before you and my sighing is not hidden from you for I'm ready to halt and fall. My pain and sorrow are continually before me. But in Psalm 73, we can almost hear God's response. Your flesh and your heart may fail, but I am the rock and the firm strength of your heart and your portion forever. This has been such an encouragement to me this week. It's been such a beautiful call to worship and to trust. And I really pray that you have found these words encouraging. I'm so looking forward to the 28th when we're all going to gather together on site again. What a call to worship and celebration that will be. And whether you join us online or whether you're there on site, we'll be looking out for you and ready to welcome you back.